Kyle Adams with the Flat Earth Institute of Science. And today I've got a special guest. Everyone, this is Glenn Hall. Glenn, uh, you've got Hello. some pretty good uh, experience there in the field of education. Is that right? Well, yeah. Uh, I actually do have a BS in education. Uh, I taught uh, in high school back in 1980-81. I have a lifetime teaching certificate in secondary mathematics, actually. Um, and, and then went on uh, six years later to study for a law degree and graduated from law school in 1989. Practiced law from 1989 and, you know, I still uh, practice law. Still practice law today. That's awesome. And uh, so when I very first got into the Flat Earth movement like years ago, uh, I remember seeing one of your videos a long time ago and I've been trying to go back and uh, make a big collection of all of the different flat earthers, uh, flat earth YouTube channels that I'm aware of. And oh, yeah. all of a sudden your name came up. It was like, Oh yeah, I remember him. And yeah. yeah. And so I wanted to get to know you better and kind of, okay. uh, yeah. And learn a little bit more about you. So, uh, tell me about your experience with flat earth. Like you've had all this, uh, experience in the field of education here. And I, I kind of think about, uh, the Apostle Paul, who was an extremely educated guy, and all of a sudden he ends up coming, becoming aware of the truth, and then he ends up making a full 180. That's you know a pretty uh, extreme experience, you know, being from you know uh, on one end of the spectrum, and all of a sudden flipping over to the other one. Yes, yes, yeah, that's a good analogy. Um, it really began for me back in the year 2015. Um, you know, I I was producing uh, YouTube videos then, and I've I've actually got something like 600 or more videos on my channel. The actual name of the channel on YouTube is Zedek Zadik, which is Z E D E K Z A D I K. It's a spiritual name. It means it actually means justice, son of righteousness, and I believe my spiritual name is Justice J U S T I C E, and um, so that's where that comes from. So I've got at least 600 uh, videos there. You can also find it if you just put in my name, Glenn Hall, G-L-E-N-N-H-A-L-L. -L. But back around 2015, I began to get all these little blurbs on YouTube about Flat Earth, and I just thought, what a joke, you know? Uh, what is, <laughs> it's just gotta be a joke, clearly, you know? I mean, that's what I thought at first. But they didn't go away, you know? I, I kept seeing them, and so finally, I decided one day, okay, I'm just going to watch one of these. Um, Rob Skiba may have been one of them. Uh, certainly, uh, what's his name, Mark? Uh, Mark Sargent? Yeah, Mark Sargent. Um, another fellow who lives over in Indonesia, I think. Uh, forgetting his name, but those three guys were around. Who kept word is the one who comes to well, mind. Well, that, that was one I watched, and then that's another one who has a very gentle voice. I think he's into yoga. Uh, oh, Eric Dubé. Yeah, yeah, Eric Dubit, right, yeah. Yeah, so uh, I watched some of his. And then there was another guy uh, had great videos, and I don't think he, I think he pulled them all down. His name was My Perspective. Uh-huh. You know, he his stuff is great. Um, I forget who I watched first, but anyway, I, uh, I watched some, and I thought for sure I would be able to quickly debunk what they said. Well, I couldn't. I mean, when I began to really look at things, um, you know, with, without prejudice, you know, just trying to have an open mind and seeing what they were saying. And I remember a video, I still remember it and still find it on online, of that picture of Chicago from across Lake Michigan. Remember that? You just see the entire skyline, you know, no curvature or anything like that. Yeah, I think yeah that the Chicago skyline is great. And what a lot of people don't realize about it is it's not just a one-time phenomenon, but it's something that happens continually throughout the year. And, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, this is so unusual. It's totally, you know, they, they just kind of write it off. But, no, it's it's really a common experience. And so uh, – uh, Well, let me give you Joshua something. Joshua Newicki was the guy who, who took the yes. original photo. That's right. He's got a big Facebook page, and he's got a whole collection of them. And so I was sharing it one time, and I was like, wow, that's amazing. <laughs> well, let me share something real quick um, just about that one observation. 
You know, in other words, when you're looking at Chicago from the other side of Lake Michigan, you see absolutely no curvature. You see the entire skyline. And according to the mathematics for the supposed curvature of the Earth, it would all be beneath your field of vision. Correct? Yeah. Okay. Well, here, here's something that's so simple. And, and it's really just basic logic. P implies Q. P would be if the Earth is a globe, then Q, there is curvature. Okay? You agree uh -huh. with that, right? Yeah, yeah. Of course. Well, another statement of logic that follows from that is this. If not Q, then not P, which means this. If there is no curvature, then the Earth cannot be a globe. Yeah. It's that simple to prove. It literally is that simple to prove because there is no curvature. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, but there's many other things, and I, I will go through some if, you, if you'd like, that I think are just such simple proofs. And it just, yeah. it just drives me crazy. The reason I, I stopped doing videos on flat Earth is just the controversy because oh, yeah. pe people will not stop and think through things, and they always get involved with straw man arguments. And they never really look at our argu arguments to determine whether or not what we're saying is true or not. They will not take the time. Yeah, I, I, I totally hear you there. The 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 sword of truth is pretty heavy sometimes, right? And so yeah, they're constantly out there battling with you, and it, it gets kind of crazy out there sometimes. But it's really refreshing to find other people out there who who get it. They have eyes to see, and wow, look at that! And yeah, so, yeah. Yeah, well, just as an example, before we got on today, I looked up a couple things. Uh, um, I think you did something with um, or concerning this guy who goes by Professor Dave some time ago. Uh huh. Or, or do you remember that at all? Um, or at least no, it was just Globe Buster. I've done a lot of videos. About two, so. about two years yeah. ago on Globe Busters, you know, and then there was one that uh, Dave Weiss did with him just uh, April 8th, 2022. Uh -huh. And just just the arrogance of these guys, you know, man, I'm I'm a professor. I know what I'm about, you know, and and see, you you have to be humble to know the truth, to ever find the truth. Mm -hmm. In fact, if you don't mind, can I get to a scripture that deals with that? Uh oh, sorry. Can you say that again? You're kind of cutting out. Could I could I take you to a scripture that? Uh, talks about what I'm saying. This is so, Absolutely. so 1 Corinthians chapter 8. First Corinthians, and this totally unknown among the church what this is all about. It's about food offered to idols. Okay. And let me just read the first uh, three verses. Now concerning food offered to idols. We know that all of us possess knowledge. This knowledge puffs up, but love builds up. If anyone imagines that he knows something, he does not yet know as he ought to know. But if anyone loves God, he is known by God. So that verse, if anyone imagines that, it, that he knows something, he does not yet know as he ought to know. Well, many years ago, in fact, about 20 years ago now, um, I just acknowledged to God, I, I just said, God, I don't understand what this chapter on food sacrifice to idols is all about. And then it goes on for several chapters, 8, 9, 10, 11, all deal with this topic. And he began then to reveal what it is. And the key is this. In scripture, food reveals to spiritual knowledge. So you either eat true food, which is Christ, the body and blood of Christ. You either eat true food or you eat defiled spiritual food. And Isaiah chapter 28 is all about the drunkards of Ephraim who defile their tables with vomit. You know, And it's not talking about just the mere fact that they get together and they might drink some wine at a table. They are spewing out defiled spiritual doctrine so food sacrifice to idols is spiritual doctrine that you sacrifice to your idols 
and all of it, and the very last word in First John, beloved, keep yourselves from idols. See, we all have a tendency to have idols of the heart. And so I wrote a book that was published in 2003 called When We Awake. When We Awake, and that, that's available on my website. My website is www.zedek.us. And there's a link to that book. You can download it and read it for free. And uh, it deals with this subject. And I don't. I I never get into arguments with people because I find that they don't want to know the truth. In fact, there's so many people. In the beginning of Romans, talks about it. Paul says, "People hide the truth in their unrighteousness," and you can go back now for hundreds of years where the scientific leaders of the world have hidden the truth. In their unrighteousness. That's when this whole ball earth thing began to really gain traction, you know, during the Renaissance, you know. And um, here we are today. We're literally what most people believe to be true is false. Yeah, what you're saying there just kind of rings a bell. I, I, I think about a lot of the whole NASA programs and they're continually naming things off of after these false gods you know we have apollo and the whole apollo projects and we've got yeah. uh artemis and all these other different crazy things out there and it's like wow you know isn't that kind of uh uh kind of <laughs> directly labeling it with false gods kind of yes. false worship there and uh, sure yeah, it's totally uncanny and that is a kind of a um the more you get into this stuff, the, the less and less you can just write it off as a coincidence, right? Right. I think for, for many people who are just beginning with Flat Earth, if they would just start looking at the videos that expose the moon landing hoax, that would begin to wake them up. Because it is so clear once you see some of those videos that they could never have let they could never have done what they said they did but even now you have videos out there of nasa saying we, we lost all of our science to do that we can't do it now and then, yeah and then another we don't have the technology to go do that again yeah we you know and that was you know over 50 years ago you know so yeah. uh if you just start there and look at some of the videos that really expose it. That will open your eyes to begin to see that NASA has lied to us about everything that they said that they did. Yeah, uh, I think uh, what's really neat about you is how after going through all of this, uh, you've kind of had that big eye-opening experience and you were humble enough to actually say, hey, you know, maybe I don't have all the answers. And what your, your whole scripture there reminded me of is the saying, the more you know, the more you know you don't know. And yeah. It's kind of, it, it's like, wow, I didn't realize that was biblical. That's, that's kind of an interesting thing there. And I really loved what you said there about uh, spiritual food. I, I can, can't, whosoever shall come to me shall never hunger or never yes. thirst. And, and so, yes. yeah, I, I love I love the symbology. That's what I love about the Bible. I love all of the deep symbology that goes into everything. And uh, it just get, gets things to another level. I just did a, a, a series of videos on YouTube, you can find them there, called Born of Water. See, when Jesus talked to Nicodemus, he said, unless a man is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of heaven. Nicodemus didn't understand him and asked him, what do you mean? And Jesus said, unless a man is born of water and the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. You see, when you're born of the Spirit, which is where, you know, if a person becomes a Christian when they're born of the Spirit, they can then see the kingdom of heaven, but they don't get in yet. See, they don't get in. You don't get in until you're born of water. Well, what does it mean to be born of water? Well, it's the washing of the water of the Word that Paul talks about in Ephesians chapter 5, and it's what the entire book of John is all about. What was Jesus doing when he washed the disciples' feet? See, he's giving, a, he's giving a picture of washing them with the water of the word. Uh -huh. See, what 
did Jesus do when he spit in the ground and made mud and put it on the blind man's eyes? He took water from his mouth, mixed it with soil, and rubbed it on the eye. He made salve. He made salve for that man's eyes. And, and Revelation chapter 3 to the church of Laodicea says, You are poor, blind, pitiful, and naked. You need to buy from me gold and white garments and eye salve so that you can see. See, we cannot see until Jesus anoints our eyes with eye salve. So one of the things that I have done for years and years, over 20 years, is I, I have just prayed, I, Lord, open my eyes that I can see. Father, open my ears so that I can hear, so that I know what you're saying, so that I understand your word. Because see, if he doesn't do it, we can't do it. It's not a matter of doing it in the flesh. I can't study hard enough. I can't work hard enough to comprehend God's word on my own. He has to reveal it to me. And that's what being born of water is. It's all about letting God himself wash you with his word and clean you with his word and therefore prepare you to be able to go into the kingdom of heaven. He's the one that gives you eyes to see. You have to, there's that spiritual discernment and you can have, you know, signs of plenty all around you. And all of a sudden, the moment you have eyes to see, that's when you, oh, wow, now I can recognize them. I don't know how many times I've ever seen my shadow throughout my entire life, but was, yeah. it wasn't until just the other morning that I noticed that my shadow was pointing uh, to the, the, the south. And it's like, what? My shadow's pointing southward? I didn't have eyes to recognize the significance of that until yeah. the creator gave me the eyes to see. And whoa, you know, how can my shadow point southward, uh, you know, if the earth is a ball? It, it doesn't make any sense. And so, so, so many yeah. things don't make sense, you know, and there, there's just so let me give you another very simple thing to do to uh, understand more about the world we live in. Especially these really hot days, you know, I'm in the Missouri, south central Missouri. We're having days of 100 degrees after 100, you know, every day, you know, it's like that. And when you are out in the sun, man, it scorches you like that. But as soon as a cloud passes in front of the sun, suddenly it cools off like crazy. Now, if the sun was 93 million miles away, like science tells us, that cloud would have no effect upon the temperature of the earth. It literally could not matter, but it immediately has effect here on the earth. You know, that couldn't happen. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's so simple. There's so many simple little things like that, that prove yeah. <laughs> that we live on a flat earth and that the sun is not 93 million miles away. Um, you know, another thing scripturally, there, let me just go through a few scriptures that are just so wonderful. Go for any excuse to say the Bible is a good excuse in my home. <laughs> proving the, the earth is flat. Um, Jeremiah 31, 35. Thus says the Lord, I am. I like to say I am because that's the representation of who he is. Thus says I am, who gives the sun for light by day and the fixed order of the moon and the stars for light by night. The fixed order of the moon and the stars. The constellations have never changed. We still have Pleiades. We still have the Big Dipper. They always come up in the same order. Their, their speed varies from the speed of the sun and the moon. They have, they have their own, you know, time. But it's always a fixed order and it never changes. If we lived in this universe that they tell us is the result of the Big Bang, you have all these motions going on and there's no way everything could remain in balance like it has. There's just no yeah. way. And then yeah. the next verse in, in Jeremiah, Jeremiah 31, 36 says, If this fixed order departs from before me, declares I am, then shall the seed of Israel cease from being a nation before me forever. And then again, Jeremiah 33, 25 says this. Thus says the Lord, if I have not established my covenant with day and night, 
and the fixed order of heaven and earth. You know, there is a fixed order and it doesn't change. Um, so, and there's other scriptures, you know, um, that you can go to that, that confirm that we live on a flat earth. The interesting thing is, to me, is that men have been able to concoct scientific formula and algorithms that seem to prove the thing that they tell us exists. But it, it doesn't. It, it is not what they say it is. It reminds me of my, my, my saying, uh, just because two times two equals four, that doesn't mean a yardstick is four feet long. <laughs> Right, right. That's so they'll, right. They'll come up with all kinds of math and say, oh, see, the math works. But unless I can actually compare the math to something in reality, I'm sorry, that math is meaningless. That's right. Yeah. And yeah, it really, it really is. Um, so um, let's see, just another quick one or two. Um, oh, there is no photo of the Earth from space. You know, if we had this orbiting, uh, what what do they call it? The international spaceship, you know. Yeah, if that was there, yeah. It could take pictures all the time and and give us real photos, but it never does, you know. Uh -huh. That's because the whole thing is a hoax. You know? Yeah, yeah. There's just time and time again of watching objects suddenly pass through a person's hand. There, you know what I mean? Uh, I've yeah. seen oh, that one too many right. times, and yeah. It's crazy. And, you know, I just look at something as simple as people's hair on the ISS. If you watch someone's hair move around in one of those zero G planes where they take you up and drop you, you watch their hair flow all around and it's very uh, wavy. But all of a sudden, all the people on the ISS, it's very, very stiff. They've got <laughs> stiff hair. And uh, yeah, it's, it's very telling. And uh, it's interesting how um, so many people choose to ignore all of the many signs that are given. And it, that kind of tells me right there that um, it kind of reminds me of the saying, you know, a sign, a sign, we want a sign, right? And that's what they always say, but is a sign really enough in the end? And that's kind of a, a big biblical thing. You know, after all these different signs that God gave to, to Pharaoh in Egypt, uh, <laughs> when was enough enough? You know, even after the last, uh, even after the last sign where his, his son died. And so there he's like, okay, you guys can go after they leave after all the plagues of Egypt, he still runs after, after the children of Israel, you know, all of those signs weren't enough to convince him. And so, that's right. Yeah. And so it kind of comes back down to that whole thing on kind of having eyes to see and being prepared. And so do you, would you say that you've kind of felt prepared for these kinds of, for these kind of, uh, I, I can call them revelations. I, have you felt like prepared throughout your life to accept these things? Well, yes. Um, I was really blessed of God to um, have found him as early as I did. I was age 21 and I had just dropped out of my uh, fourth year of college. You know, I had always been a good student. I was I was a math major, you know, um, and that's not easy stuff, you know. Yeah. But, uh, I got uh, more interested in partying than anything, and so I dropped out my fourth year. And I was working at a music store, so all I did was party and listen to music. Uh, but I was reading some philosophy. I'd always been interested in philosophy. And I was reading a guy named Krishna Murti, you know, a, a Hindu philosopher. Very good stuff. He's got some... You know, he's worth reading. He really has some good things to say. But anyway, I just finished a book. I went, and there was a bookstore across the street in Clayton, Missouri, from uh, the bookstore I worked at, or the uh, music store I worked at. So I went over to the bookstore and I went to the philosophy section, looking for another Krishnamurti book. I had just turned 21, and uh, I didn't find any. But I, right in the middle of philosophy, there was this book that said the New English Bible. And uh, I said to myself, you know, I've always heard the truth is in this book. Why don't I just buy it and read it like I would any book and see if it is, you know? So I did, and I took it over to where it worked and would read it when I had time. I'd take it home at night and read it, bring it back to work. So I did that over a period of probably around two months, something like that. And I had read 
all the way up into the book of Deuteronomy in the Old Testament. Fifth book, so about, two, book right there. <laughs> about 200 pages in the Bible, because they're all long books. And then I, I was in my third time reading the New Testament. Okay, so I was reading both parts of the Bible, you know, different times of the day. And one night I was reading uh, something from the Old Testament, and I said, wait a minute. The voice of the person speaking here is, is like the voice of the person that I read earlier today from the New Testament. You know, it's like the same writer. If you've read books by certain authors, you know what they sound like. You know, you know it's yeah. that author. Like C.S. Lewis, for example, you could never mistake him if you read the Chronicles of Narnia, you know. Uh -huh. uh, so they anyway, their own kind of ways of writing, their own writing style. Yeah. So I realized, I, I said, but wait a minute. The, the Old Testament was written hundreds of years before the New Testament was written. And I said to myself, this is impossible unless God wrote the Bible. And when I said those words to myself, the voice of God literally spoke to me and said, that's right, Glenn. And I want you to teach my word. Well, that was... Excuse me, tingles right there. <laughs> that, that was 40... Uh, six years ago. You know, 46 years ago. And uh, from that point on, see, that that was when the word of the Lord was revealed to me. I'm still feeling it just tingles. <laughs> read, read, read 1 Samuel chapter 3, verses 1 through 7. See, Samuel, he hears a voice saying, Samuel, Samuel. And he's a young person who's in Eli's. Eli was the high priest. So he goes to Eli's room and Eli, here I am. You called me. No, I didn't. Go back to bed. Mm -hmm. He goes back to bed, Samuel, Samuel. So he goes again to Eli and says, Eli, here I am. You called me. No, I didn't go back to bed. And he hears it a third time and goes back to Eli. And finally, Eli realizes it's the Lord. But the scripture says, at that point, it says, Samuel did not yet know the Lord because the word of the Lord had not been revealed to him. So when I was 21 years old, the word of the Lord was revealed to me. No, there was no backsliding after that. See, because the word of the Lord was revealed to me. And so from that time on, almost daily, I have read the scripture. You know, there's been days that I didn't, you know, like maybe I went on a camping trip or something, you know, and didn't take a Bible with me. You know, because it, it's not like, oh, I've got to read a scripture today or else I, I, I've fallen off the wagon or something like that, you know. No, not at all. But my heart is to feed on the Word of God every day, you know, uh, and, and that has sustained me. And so, I think, yeah, I think it's really interesting how uh, with the Bible, it, it starts off by introducing that there is a God. And then after that, okay, well, how do we know there is a God? Well, let's look at all these things that were created. And so we, we get into the very creation of things and look at the entire world and the way it's organized and all of these things are a testimony that there is a god yes. and okay well okay so that 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 goes for a lot of different religions out there well how do i know what god to believe in right and so um right after that we kind of get into to more and how god actually speaks to people and so it's all about this foundation of okay well there's organization and now here's some revelation and and so that's the way things work that's the foundation to the entire bible as i see it that's why we start off with genesis chapter one and you know we just look at all this organization and then it's all about relationship after that god coming and speaking to to people like adam and eve and and his sons and and right. you know posterity and throughout all of history you know we see all these different prophets like Abraham and Moses where God steps into their lives and says, here I am. And so right, I right. feel like that's kind of what's going on with you here is you're kind of had this experience where you're reading the Bible and all of a sudden God spoke to you and said, here I am. This is my word. And he Amen. kind of he exactly. for himself. Yeah. So now that, that is a very rare occasion for me. God, in fact, I don't know if I've ever had <clears throat> that strong of a, feeling of hearing God. I mean, there have been some decisions I've made where I felt like in, after prayer, I felt direction from God to do something. But nothing nearly as strong as that. That never, ever left me in my whole life. And now, you know, uh, that happened when I was 21, and I'm, uh, I'll be 67 in October, you know. So yeah. it was a long time ago, you know. Now, yeah. that, 
what you said reminds me of this. What men have done has been to try to hide God. And to do that, they hide the creation. Why do you think it's illegal to go to Antarctica? I, I looked into that and like there are like certain places, but there's a guy who got arrested for just sailing over into Antarctica. And so then you see other other videos of people who are getting close to it and all of a sudden a big war boat comes out of nowhere, you know, destroyer and says, Hey guys, you need to back off. You you need authorization to pass here and yeah. you guys don't have it. I was just like, What? And so yeah, it's kind of go ahead. And think of this. All the nations, the powerful nations of the world, Russia, America. England are all part of that treaty, but we're always at war with each other, you know, but they're all part of that treaty. You cannot go to Antarctica. Well, why not? Because that's where the firmament comes down and you can actually see it. You can, uh -huh. you can actually prove the firmament if you went there to see it. Yeah. Know? And it totally disproves the globe Earth because you realize that we live on a flat Earth. You know, yeah, you don't you don't see that with. You know, and I think that's really strong evidence right there is the humongous difference between the way Antarctica is treated compared to uh, the North Pole. Yeah. It's, it's you know, heads and tails difference. You know, they don't treat the North Pole that way. Oh, anyone can go there. And, uh, and the environment itself is vastly, vastly different. You know, they actually have seasons. It's, it, it sustains life. You've got... Uh, it's actually has a nice summer to it, right? But yeah. it doesn't get warm enough out in Antarctica. It's completely different. <laughs> so. Right, right. So, um, you know, those are things that people need to look at. Um, and when you open your heart to God and you pray for him to reveal himself to you, of course, he'll do that. Oh, and, and I, I went to a scripture that I, because uh, you touched on something that I think really really relates to the time we live in right now. Very much so. So if you don't mind, I'll read this from 2 Thessalonians. Okay. Thank you. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Now concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our being gathered to him, we ask you, brothers, not to be quickly shaken in mind or alarmed, either by a spirit or a spoken word or a letter seeming to be from us, to the effect that the day of the Lord has come. Let no one deceive you in any way, for that day will not come unless the divorcement comes first and the man of lawlessness is revealed. The son of destruction who opposes and exalts himself against every so-called God or object of worship so that he takes his seat in the temple of God, proclaiming himself to be God. Now, I believe that that has happened. I personally believe that the divorcement, this, this English Standard Version says the rebellion comes first. The man of lawlessness is revealed. I believe the man of lawlessness is us, all of humanity that continues to disobey God. And I believe yeah. he, he has been clearly revealed now. But I, won't, I did a whole series on the mystery uh, of lawlessness um, last, well, a couple years ago. You can find on my website. Uh, and the temple of God here. The man of lawlessness takes his seat in the temple of God. Well, what is the everybody looks for a temple over Jerusalem? Okay. They're going to rebuild yeah. and say, no, no, no. I am the temple of God. I am the temple of God. So the man of lawlessness is man declaring that he is God. So he mm -hmm. takes his seat in his own temple. You know, and that's basically where most people in the world who are not really following Christ are. They have taken the seat in their own temple, declaring that they are God. They can declare what's right and wrong, and they can do what they think is right and wrong without regard yeah. to what God says is right and wrong. Okay. Yeah. That's yeah, they're, what they're continually that's what that trying to rewrite the rules, and yeah, you know, if God says this, and they're like, "Oh no, I don't, I don't agree with that." So I'm going to go ahead and rewrite my own rules. And so now you see in some churches out there, they're they're practicing gay marriage in different churches. It's like, wow, they, really? <laughs> so, that's that's exactly yeah. right. So much of the church is there. Now another thing too, a lot a lot of the new age people are out there, and there's some people out there who are, uh, I think, trying to reveal what's going on. In, in terms of some very wicked things that governments are doing. But yet what you'll find with the new age teachers is that 
they always reserve to themselves the right to declare what is right and wrong and to decide what sin is for themselves. Mm-hmm. Okay? God says, no, 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 no. That's up to me. <laughs> okay? So God is the one who declares right and wrong. So let me go on with this because I'm getting to where we are right now. Um, so the man of lawlessness takes his seat in the temple of God, proclaiming himself to be God. Well, that's exactly what the New Agers say, that they are God, you know, and that they're just uh, advancing to the next stage, you know, in their, in their godhood. <clears throat> Verse 5, do you not remember that when I was still with you, I told you these things? And you know what is restraining him now so that he may be revealed in his time? For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who now restrains it will do so until he is out of the way. And then the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord Jesus will destroy with the breath of his mouth and bring to nothing by the appearance of his coming. I want to quickly make a point here. When it, when it talks about Jesus destroying someone by the breath of his mouth, it does not necessarily mean he's just going to kill them outright, because that's what brings them new life. So mm-hmm. God destroys wickedness by bringing them into relationship with himself okay Mm -hmm. that's how he does that and so he brings this to nothing by the appearance of his coming the coming of the lawless one is by the activity of satan with all power and false signs and wonders and i think those are happening now i believe covid was an incredible false sign and wonder and i i really believe that the jab was taking the mark of the beast. And I think that the next president of the U.S. is going to make that mandatory. And that is when you won't have a choice. You know, you'll either take it or die or else you will have found a way to a place where God is protecting his people. But the coming of the lawless one is by the activity of Satan with all power and false signs and wonders. And with all wicked deception for those who are perishing because they refused to love the truth and so be saved. They refused to love the truth. Therefore, God sends them a strong delusion so that they may believe what is false in order that all may be condemned who did not believe the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. That describes why the world is under mass deception now. It's because most people do not love the truth, and most people want to continue in their mad pursuit of pleasure. Most people, or many people I know, they got their jab so that they could go on another holiday to Europe or somewhere, or they could go to the nightclubs, or they could go to the ball games, or whatever it was, you know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was really interesting right, right there. Uh, just kind of watching the world react to all of that, and yeah, uh, it's just been you know really crazy, and it's been um, interesting watching people's responses to has this helped improve your trust in the government or has it weakened your trust in the government? And a lot of people, because of that, they're really waking up, and so I'm kind of like putting my ducks in there. Okay, so we we don't trust the government here and we don't trust the government here and we don't trust the government here but for some reason you have absolute devout devotion to nasa and you believe everything they say and so they're like oh oh i i I never quite thought about that before and so yeah it's well the same reason they have i'm sorry go ahead you're fine you're fine the same reason they have absolute uh, confidence in their medical providers you know yeah they they don't stop to question really what's going on and you know i mean everybody could tell their horror stories of people who had operations and they might have removed the wrong limb or cut out too much of the intestine or whatever it was that they were going into the hospital for but it happens all the time i mean i have horror stories in my own family i could tell you but you know i don't want to go there but (laughs) you know what i mean you know yes yeah i'm just thinking here of uh the problem with the, the the school the public education system and about how you know, when, when they really 
require you to agree with everything they say, that right there just comes off as a very strong delusion. Okay, so I'm gonna write, you know, on my on my test, the sun is 93 million miles away. That and so they you do a big chapter about that, and they go through and they tell you all these different things, and then all of a sudden you get to the end, and they okay, repeat back to me what I just said, and if. If I say, I'm sorry, I don't agree with that. I'm sorry, you failed the course. And yeah, they, right. they force right. you to. And so if I say, okay, well, um, and so you either have to lie and pretend like, okay, I do agree with everything you say. Uh, you have to do that in order to get onto the next course. I was just like, what? That's just, that's the world we live in. And so for me, that's a very eye opening thing right there of just the big problem. And yeah, it's not just, um, according to this person, the sun is 93 million mile, miles away. And so if it, if you just change that slight wording in there, then we can fix a lot of these problems. And so I, that, that way I actually have room to have my own opinion of, of things. Uh, but no, nope, no, nope, we, we don't want you to have your own opinion. We don't want you to think for yourself. You, we want you to say the, these things because that's what we believe. And we want you to believe what, we, what uh, everything we say. So that's right. Just, oh, yes. Yeah. We're fed propaganda. Well, I, I just don't listen to news at all, um, and haven't for a long time. But I, you know, the last the twenty twenty election was certainly the end of me ever even listening to uh, radio news. You know, because I just found that everything was false. You you could not get the truth anywhere. Uh, look at the incredible fiasco going on now about the January sixth thing. You know, in Congress, I have no confidence in our leaders, whether Republican or Democrat. Uh, yeah. You know, I mean, it's just they're the and you know the governments are actively working against the people today. You know, uh, I'm sure that you and your listeners have heard that there have been many, many catastrophic fires of food processing plants this year. Yeah, yeah. And then all of a sudden they're blaming it on inflation, right? And they're like, oh, oh yeah, we're going we're gonna to burn all these chickens and we're going to, you know, kill all these cows with all this heat. And oh, yeah, they're just dehydrated, right? It's, it's just really hot right now. And so the, you can see that there is a movement here uh, that they're, you know, killing all these chickens. And uh, out in California, I was just hearing about uh, like the biggest pork industry in the United States uh, moving out of California, we're going to close up shop. And so yeah. food prices are continually rising and yeah. yet, Oh, it's inflation. It's inflation. That's, that's all it is. And yeah. Well, see Kansas a few weeks ago, you had the news. I think it was 5,000 cows big, ready to be slaughtered. Just dropped dead from the heat. That's a total lie. I have, I have over 60 head of cows myself. It's 101 degrees today. And it's been a hundred over a hundred uh, many days in the last several weeks. It's supposed to be a hundred for the next two weeks. My cows are doing fine. They don't you know? just drop dead because of the heat. <laughs> they don't. They don't just drop dead because of the heat. So that was a lie. They are destroying our food supply on purpose. Uh, it's looking pretty grim for what's going to be happening this fall and, and winter because they and they've been telegraphing it, you know, but they are engineering food shortages throughout the world to, to happen beginning in just another month. It's these times that I'm really grateful to have eyes to see it, eyes to see exactly what's going on in front of us. And so we can actually be prepared for these kinds of situations that are coming before us. We, yeah, it's, you know, for all of the people who are just kind of going along and nodding along with the system, uh, it's going to come at them. All these calamities are going to hit them like a thief in the night. Right. And so well, I'm just thinking best. right now, I'm, I'm just thinking right now about a dream I had recently. It was a really powerful dream. It was really short too, where um, I looked up in the sky. I was up on a hill. I looked up in the sky and I saw a dragon flying around. I was like, Oh, wow, that's weird. And so I, uh, I channeled my energy. I started like putting energy into my hands, like a spiritual energy into my hands. And I used that energy to fly up into the sky and go and get a closer look at this dragon flying around. But as I approached it and got close to it, uh, it turned out that the dragon was mechanical. It was completely fake. And so I was like, oh, that's interesting. 
And huh. immediately afterwards, I came down and I landed back on the ground and I started talking to someone. And yeah, and so uh, at first I just kind of woke up, oh, that was an interesting dream. And then I started to, to think more about it and the symbols behind all of these things and what they could mean. And so, uh, you know, this is spiritual energy that uh, I'm using to go and get a, a higher perspective on life, a higher perspective of things. And I remember seeing the clouds on that up up high. And and, uh, and so I'm getting a, a bigger perspective on things. And when I go up there, all of a sudden I find out that uh, something that looked real was actually fake. I was like, oh, wow, you know, that's actually what we do. That's what we do is, is uh, we, we make these discoveries. We use this spiritual energy to to go up there and and find this higher perspective on things and then what do we do we we come back down and we come and talk about it and make friends that way and uh yeah it was a, a very fascinating uh thing just i was like wow well thanks for that that dream that was that was neat yeah that's good uh with respect to the food issue i don't i'm not really advising people to go out and just store up a bunch of food and things. I think it's wise to have, always have a few weeks of food and definitely have, you know, gallons of water and, and probably water purifier some way that you can- Food storage is a smart thing. <laughs> yeah, so that you can get things, but yet we need to, to, we really need to trust God because there's going to be people who don't have anything. And I've heard, I've heard some Christians and I've been dismayed when I've heard them say that, they would actually shoot somebody who came on their land to try to get food because that's their food, you know. And I even rebuked one once for that uh, because, you know, no, that's my, you know, I will share my food. You know, I will share. Yeah. And I, I just think about Elijah, Elijah the prophet and how, you know, even in the midst of the, the terrible famine, he was feeling that too, you know, it took ravens to come and feed him. And so he didn't have like a, a massive amount of food storage, but he was provided for Right. And now just imagine the widow who's who's over there and preparing her final meal for her and her son and you know oh right. Elijah you want my food <laughs> 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 yeah. imagine that whole start playing out that way <laughs> does yeah. it work you know all of a sudden no. now the widow and and her son they they both die because now Elijah can't can't come and bless her and her family and so right. uh, but when we but because she was humble enough to actually share that last little bit of food with her, she was provided for as well. And that is that's a, right. a really good, good perspective on life. Yeah. Yes, it is. Yeah, that's that's wonderful. And I would encourage everyone listening to read uh, Matthew chapters 24, 25, and the first couple verses in 26, because Jesus said that two days before he was crucified. And those chapters have probably the most information concerning the times we live in than any other in the Bible, except for perhaps the book of Revelation. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Jesus says that the time we're coming into is going to be the hardest time ever to come upon the earth. And if those days were not short, no flesh would survive. That's how lost horrible. Uh, it just unless, cut out for a second. I'm sorry. Unless those days were shortened, no flesh would survive. The time is going to be so hard we're coming into. He's talking about the Great Tribulation. And so we need to steel ourselves for that time because we are in that time. We are in that time. I believe that we have entered the beginning of the Tribulation. The first half, I think there's going to be a three and a half year period that's going to be way harder than this first three and a half years. But this has been a three and a half hard years. Uh, I mean, you know, the first couple of years of it have been really hard for me and my family just because we've had to deal with things like COVID. We've caught it. I've caught it. I, I thought I was going to die back the beginning of December. And I had to find a doctor who would prescribe for me the things that would keep me from having to go to a hospital like ivermectin and hydroxychloroquine, you know, and so I did find one. I got a seven day dose of those and some other things. And at the end of seven days, finally, I, I was kicked it. But my wife 
And my one child remaining here with me, who's 28 years old, evidently caught COVID a little over a week ago. And now they have to see a doctor on Monday because they're not getting over it, you know. And so they'll probably have to go through the same regimen. But it's been an incredibly difficult uh, year for, for me and my family. But I think the reason why God has let us go through it, rather than just simply healing us when, when I say that first prayer, God, please heal us, is that he wants us to understand what the world is now going through. He wants us to have compassion and empathy for all the poor folk that are being devastated in this time. You know, we live in a time now that is so evil. And what is so sad to me is that many people still don't see it. Many Christians still don't get it, uh, even. You know, they're still going about church as usual and still thinking they have time for their all their conventions and their plays and, you know, all the great events, you know, and that there's going to be this great end-time revival. Well, there is going to be a great end-time revival, but it's going to be during a time of incredible persecution. And it's not going to be pretty. It's not going to be fun. It's going to be hard. It's going to be incredibly difficult. And so we have to steal ourselves for that. We have to be ready for that. I recently wow. did. I, just, I have to say, I, I really feel God speaking through you right now. Just like the spirit's really strong right there. I'm, I'm wow. feeling it. And uh, the you're kind of at a, a, a pretty low point the other day there. And uh, you're not, you were kind of expressing how you didn't feel God, but I'm, I'm feeling him speaking through you right now. And so it sounds to me like you're hearing God again. And I think that's well, awesome. I think, I think I am hearing God and I think I have, even when I've been low, but it's been very, it's been very difficult um, because see, there isn't a quick answer to prayer. And, and yeah. you know, my wife is very sick. My son is very sick. And, and what can we do? We're not, we do not trust the medical establishment. We just don't. We see what they've done to people. Well, a lot of your viewers probably know what happened to Rob Skiba, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I just got a letter from his wife yesterday asking for help for her in a lawsuit against the hospital. He was in the hospital for 40 days. Wow. 40 days days and then died uh -huh. and 40 is the number of tribulation 40 is the number of testing you know i'm sure that in those 40 Whoa. days yeah. i'm sure in those 40 days rob became so close to god you know um but it was well there's no one there's no denying that because he's with him you know yeah 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 it was that, but it was so hard for him. You can imagine. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's things like that that I, I wish we had on video to kind of capture those experiences that they're having in there. And, you know, that those end up being very mysterious and they shouldn't be. And yeah, but that, yeah, we want to try and isolate them from the world as much as possible and, and kind of cut off the communication lines. And yeah, I, I don't like all these, these mysteries that, that shouldn't be mysteries. Yes. Right. So, so really, um, another recent uh, series of videos I did, well, I mentioned Born of Water. The very first one of that is about having the extra oil you need as one of the five wise virgins. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Jesus told that parable right after he told them the signs of his coming and the end time signs. It goes directly, you know, don't break it up by chapter. You just keep reading 24, 25 in the first couple of verses of 26. It all happened at the same time. And so Jesus is very adamant that we need to be watching. We need to be praying that we're ready. And we need to be filled with extra oil. You know, what is that extra oil? The extra oil is the oil of the Holy Spirit that comes through the washing of the Word, that we continue to bathe ourselves in the Word of God. We continue to feed upon Jesus. 
we continue to eat his word you know we must continue because that's how we will be ready and we will be then one of the five wise virgins that can go in to the wedding feast wow i'm just thinking about like this whole experience here about you kind of having your eyes opened and uh experiencing this washing with the word right and yes. uh uh, so you had first kind of, uh, had your kind of revelation with the Bible in your twenties, you said 21, age 21, age 21. And so years go by and you've just kind of gone through the Bible and there's all these things that have been there this whole time. And then all of a sudden, uh, you have another revelation here when it, all of a sudden it comes to flat earth and all of a sudden that kind of hits the Bible and all of a sudden, wow, now you're, you're reading the Bible again with totally new eyes right right yeah, it's, amen yeah. the bible is always new you see it is layer upon layer and and it says in isaiah line upon line precept upon precept you know that's the only way that we ever understand the word we can't just read it and think we know it we can't just go to a commentary remember what the commentary says and think we know it we can't just have a teacher that we really love and learn what he knows and think we know it no, we have to know it because we have direct communication with God. And then yeah, he gives us his word. He gives us his water. He feeds us. I love that. Yeah, I love that. It's it's more than just reading a book. It's having an experience with the book. It you know, it's not just uh it's not just washing yourself with it, I guess you could say, but it's drinking it. You've it, yeah. feast upon the words of Christ, for they shall tell you all things if what ye must do, right? Amen. Amen. So that's that's it right there. Right. Uh, oh. It's something that needs to be eaten. It's something that needs to be ingested. It needs to be applied to us. It needs to change us from the inside, not just from the outside. And so it's not just a book full of trivia that we're trying to to go through. And I think some of the the really powerful moments in my life have been where I have decided, you know what, I am very imperfect and. Uh, I want to change. And so when I open myself up to saying, okay, Heavenly Father, I'm ready to give up my sins. Right? I, there's yeah. a certain sin in my life that I, uh, I I know you're against. And so you know, I'm getting to this point where I'm ready to offer that up. I'm ready to change. And when right. I have that that willingness to change, Amen. Then, you know, show me my imperfections. Right. Show me my imperfections so I can change them. And you know, sometimes there's those moments. Are you sure you want to do that? It was like, this is so hard for me because it's hard. To, it's hard for me to give it up, and so there's an actual sacrifice there. But when yes. I'm actually willing to to sacrifice, that's where miracles happen, and I've seen that like firsthand. That's right. And yeah, it's it's been amazing. So that's right. That's a that's a good word, you know. And the word is our food, and then so you go back to the, to that First Corinthians chapter eight: food sacrificed to idols is the false doctrine you get when you are just pursuing your own idols. And so we, we have to find idols. This is the stuff in the name of Apollo, in the name of, you know, Artemis and all these other, yeah. you know, crazy uh, Roman gods and, and Greek gods. And yeah, there's just so much of that. Yeah. And one of the things that happened to me along at the very same time when I was 21 and first began reading the Bible, is that while I was reading it, God began convicting me of sin. And I remember just weeping sometimes, just thinking, I'm a sinner, you know? And praise God, he brought the remedy, you know, which is yeah. he, he himself, you know? So, but that's right. We have to understand that we are sinners and we must rely upon, upon him for his forgiveness for that. And we always will, because in this flesh, we will always have a propensity to sin, you know, but there will come a time we're, spo we're supposed to practice righteousness now. Read First John chapters 2 and 3 about practicing righteousness, because without holiness, no one will see God. But if we practice righteousness, then when he comes, we will not be ashamed. And then it says we will see him as he is, for we will be like him. So when we're glorified, when he actually changes our flesh into spiritual reality, we will be like him and be able to relate to him person to person. 
And yeah. that's the goal. That's the goal of all of this. Yeah. 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 Uh, just uh, thinking, I was thinking here about that relationship and how there's a lot of people out there who don't like to mesh science with religion. But as far as I can tell, science is all about learning to understand cause and effect. You know, I do this and this happens. I do this and this happens. And that's what science is all about. It's systematizing right. knowledge and and learning from your experiences. You know, you can even go learning from your mistakes. That's all science. And so I don't I don't put okay, religion goes over here and science goes over here. No, not at all. Because religion it should be an experience. It's and so it's all about making these kinds of observations and learning from them, sure. learning these causes and effects. And so Absolutely. science and religion, they shouldn't be divided. You know, that's the whole kind of separation between church and state kind of a mindset. And so like right. you know, and I, I I can understand that on the on the federal level and you know, we don't want to kind of single anyone out, but we want to be open to 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 uh, to accepting different people of different beliefs in the in the in the education system, I get that. But when it comes to to science and religion, that's something that shouldn't be divided, uh, you know, personally anyway. No well, one I, says, yeah, I it's just a, a tragedy when people do that and say, oh no, yes. I can't, I can't mix my experiences with right. uh, between the two. I was just going to say the Bible, I think, gives us direction and instruction for how we can approach science because it clearly tells us that some things are off limits like genetic modification off limit, yeah. you know so there's places we should not have gone in science that we went we hell bent on certain things that are destroying our earth i mean weather modification i mean my weather is modified every day by chemtrails mm -hmm. i think this this heat system we have is that we haven't had rain now for over a month and a half and all of our fields are dying and that will mean that we'll have to probably sell off most of our herds, which means prices plummet, we make no money, and then it means there'll be no beef available next year. You uh, know? Yeah. Ah, uh, man, there's just so much of that that resonates with me, uh, with your kind of background uh, with uh, in agriculture here. I, I'm so curious about that. It kind of. Uh, I'm kind of a city boy myself, but I'm, I've got a lot of interest in actually getting into agriculture, but they don't really, they never taught me that in school or anything like that. And, uh, and I've got some, uh, some of my ancestors have had uh, some experience in farming and so, oh, I want to go learn for that. But they didn't really leave anything to me to, to pick up in their footsteps or anything I got like that. Started, so uh, my, my grandma, she was a farmer and a farmer and I went and talked to her about getting, uh, involved in that and so and I, I just i'm trying to grow broccoli right now yeah. and my 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 heads of broccoli are they're really skimpy and so okay well what do i do my grandma's advice and she was a farmer she's like you know what i went down to costco and they've got tons of broccoli for super cheap i was like that's not gonna <laughs> fix me that's gonna that's not gonna teach me anything it was like yeah just go to the grocery store i'm like that's not going to teach me how to be a farmer. <laughs> so yes, I was right. I, my heart broke when when she gave me a response <laughs> like that. It's like, oh, don't grow broccoli. Just let the store do that for you. I was like, oh. <laughs> so yeah. But, well, we started this when I was about fifty four or so. So, you know, I, I was always in the cities too until we moved down here twenty two years ago, and we're a very rural area now. But I never ever thought I would work cattle or you know, cut hay and do things like that, you know, so it's a totally new experience, you know. Kind of, uh, kind of that calling, did you feel that kind of in your bones, just kind of calling you to, to, to the land? Well, it was my son, really, uh, he uh -huh. wanted to be a cattle rancher, and so we just began to do some things, and here we are, you know, yeah. and God began to give us, you know, to add land to what we had, so that we actually have the fields and things now, so, uh, you know, it's been, it's been very interesting, but it's it's hard work and never have made a dime. We lose money every year. We're, we hope that this year would turn the corner, but with what's happening now with the drought, um, you know, we're, we're supposed to get a little rain tonight and tomorrow. We pray it happens because, yeah. you know, our, our grass is all dried up. 
So how did you learn how to be a cattle rancher? That That's kind of a pretty cool thing for me. I don't really see myself, like, I don't know where to begin with stuff like that. I've always dreamed of doing stuff like that, but I don't, I just don't know where to begin. And so I actually started uh, raising uh, mice and rats and I just kind of collect animals and sell them. And so, yeah, they end up, I make more money off of mice and rats to the local reptile community than oh, I yeah. do with you know, things out of my garden there. And so I was really interested in that. And like, how'd you uh, get into that? That's, that's really cool. Well, we uh, found some local people that my son could work for. And so he began to work for some of the cattle ranchers, learn some basic things. And then uh, we started with uh, just a couple of cows, you know, uh, leased a bull for a while to get him pregnant. And then started with those and you know now we have a herd you know and we still feel like we don't know anything but you you learn a little bit as you go we're gonna actually later this year i'm gonna have a couple very experienced men come and help us uh you know maybe make some decisions you know gotta give you some tips and, and tricks on you right, know right. growing yeah. growing things and that's cool uh have you ever thought of much of Green Acres? There's got to be a, a little bit of a connection there, kind of a, maybe a family joke about it. <laughs> Not really, no. I did uh, watch that I, as a kid, though, you know? Yeah. Uh, that's kind of a classic that I, I I grew up watching, but I, I have make this connection here of uh, the lawyer who decides to go become a farmer and it's like, oh, that's kind of you're a lawyer and you've decided to go out in there and, and turn to agriculture. That's really cool. But, so, yeah. yeah. Uh, I didn't even get into. Uh, programming I, I really after i taught in 1980-81 i started up a computer programming business called practical microsystems and used to program relational databases and and take you know those huge clunky portable compacts uh to small businesses trying to sell them a, a business system you know so i did that for about three years and then uh ended up uh I felt the Lord calling me to go to law school in 1986, and so gave up, you know, that uh, programming at that time, you know. Uh huh. So um, you were getting into computers there, and uh, you ended up uh, deciding to do to go a different path, and ended up going to law school instead. That's what you said, right? So I yes. had a phone call. That okay, cool. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So. Anyway, you kind of have my whole history at this point. <laughs> <laughs> that's cool. That's 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 fun. That, I love getting to know you. Yeah, you're a a person who definitely stands out, and I I feel like there's a lot of uh, resonance between us. And yeah, yeah, same really here, cool. Kyle. I appreciate it. I mean, I feel like um, feel like God has led this conversation, and that there's nuggets here that really need to get out there. And I really hope and pray that people will listen to this video. And the word will get out because we're in a serious time and um, most people still don't see it, you know, but we're yeah. there. We are there. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Uh, yeah. So I'm, I'm really happy that you've endured all of these different years and yeah, have carried on. And uh, it's, it's, yeah, I know it's tough sometimes and yeah, it can be quite challenging, especially with, uh, for me, I know, a lot of close family members that just kind of anytime I talk about flat earth, all of a sudden that's a taboo topic all of a sudden. And, oh yeah. Uh, we stay away from it among most of our uh, family, but uh, both of my brothers, they believe it. And then uh, my wife and my son who lives here, believe it. So, and then we had, wow. a couple, we had a couple people move here from North Carolina to be close to us um, who were actually older than me, who both believe in flat earth too so it's it's interesting how god wow. is showing his truth to people you know yeah it definitely makes things a lot easier when you when you've got a good community there do you do many like meetups in your area or anything like that with like the, the clock out well, we haven't been and part of the reason has been because of just sicknesses you know that we've gone yeah. through and yeah. haven't had the strength uh stamina uh to do it so yeah. You know, we, we really uh, have to do things as God provides, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I'm glad he was able to provide that support for you and, you know, kind of give you that reassurance that, hey, you're not alone. You know, this other people Amen. are waking up around you, like in, in your immediate area. And I think that's kind of one of the neat things for me with 
uh, the clock app. I don't, I, I'm just going to, uh, I don't, I don't know how into that you've gotten with, uh, the, the flat earth clock app. That's uh, David. Is that yeah, right? David Weiss's flat earth clock app. Yeah. 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 And so he, he did have, that. I, see, I don't have a cell phone, so I don't have oh, any, okay. apps, you know, but okay. I've seen a little bit about it and it looks really cool. And, and I'm, I'm really impressed with the work that David does. You know, I think, yeah, that, yeah. I mean, he has put together some things. I mean, he is a guy to watch if you, yeah. if you he's, need to get, he's a, he's a MVP in flat earth for sure. I just think about oh, absolutely. Like, yeah, I'm watching. I love, it tells me all of the di different, uh, other flat earth clock app users in my area. And so right now there's like 40 other people and I can easily go ahead and collect or organize that. I can easily go ahead and organize the different meetups with them. And so I do like a monthly meet and greet out in St. George, like all the time. And we've get, we've had some great turnout in the past and it, we haven't had any really? trolls wow. show up or anything like that. And it's just been, Hey, wow, you know, we're not alone and, you know, go out there and meet friends, you know, within my That's local cool. area. It's amazing. And that so, is neat. Yeah. What state is that in? In Utah. I'm out in Utah. Oh, and, is that right? Yeah. And so okay. I'm kind of out in kind of a, I, I can't, quite say it's as rural as it used to be but yeah i'm, I'm out in the suburbs of saint george and uh how's saint george is rapidly growing these days really? how's your weather yeah. how's your um, weather it's really hot <laughs> it's really hot yeah so yeah really hot and dry and so we're like in the middle of this big mega drought right now and yeah i'm i'm trying to grow a bunch of zucchini right now <laughs> a whole bunch of that and uh doing this constant battle with squash bugs <laughs> and so oh yeah yeah same here yeah. we uh my wife has a garden um, I think next year my plan is to to really separate my my squash plants and uh, get them like a little like a plant here like in the yard and then like way over on the other side of the yard do another <laughs> squash plant and that way it's not just a, a total fest on for the yes. squash bugs make them travel make them work <laughs> so. Uh, I don't, know. Yeah. I don't know if that that strategy will work, but I'm willing to give it a try next year because this year I just yeah, got them all in one area, and all of a sudden, oh, there goes one plant, and oh, and now I'm watching another one go down. And I, yeah. I had some great success in the beginning, but all of a sudden now, it, yeah, I'm kind of watching them slow down and ah, just hang in there, hang in there. And, yep. Yeah, it's this ongoing battle, and I thought and neem oil worked for a little bit, and then all of a sudden it just didn't. It, they kind of got used to the the taste of it, I guess. And oh. then I tried sprinkling some, uh, diatomaceous earth on the, like the stems. And yes. I think that helps a little bit, but they're still kind of, yeah, getting around that and it ends up washing off and, uh, oh, it's boy. just this constant battle. So, yeah. We struggle with the very same thing here. You know, my wife, she says, this is the worst garden she's ever had. I think this year. Yeah. So it's been but, a tough year. Yeah. But I, even though I'm definitely having my struggles and it's not like producing a ton, there's still a certain amount of uh, spiritual peace that comes from it. And yes. uh, it, yeah, I, I, I think one of my favorite times of day is uh, that moment where I just go eat my breakfast. I'll go like make some breakfast in the morning and then I'll just go sit, in the, sit out in the garden and I'll just kind of be out there in nature <laughs> in my garden, uh, just watching everything while I eat my breakfast. And that just, seven o'clock in the morning where it's nice and cool out. And, uh, I have Guinea pigs. I have, uh, one of the many animals that I attend to, and they actually just roam my garden freely and oh, yeah. uh, they don't eat my zucchini. And so they go and do all my weeding for me. They eat the tall grasses all around there for me. Wow. And, yeah. And they, they leave my zucchini alone. I was like, yes, <laughs> I love cool. finding those kind of uh, symbiotic relationships there. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. That's great. Thankfully they, thankfully they haven't been attacked by like the, the local dogs or anything like that. And so it's just kind of been one yeah. miracle after another with that. And so, yeah. That's so cool. though, it, yeah, it doesn't produce a ton. It, it still gives me kind of a, a closer connection, I guess you could say with God. And uh, I think about kind of man's purpose there is to, to, to take care of and tend to the earth. And yeah. And so it, there's a connection with that and I'm, per and I, I'm imperfect at it, but I'm learning and that's, yes. that's a neat experience. Right. One other thing that uh, c comes to my mind is that if anyone has school aged children, I really advise you to homeschool your children because they're indoctrinated with propaganda all the time and you don't know what they're teaching them. 
in the school. Yeah, books, you it's, know? it's crazy just how how uh, how much how little you know about what's what you're what they're actually teaching them. Uh, and so I, I, with my older kids there, uh, I taught, uh, my, my oldest two, uh, the entire kindergarten curriculum before they turned five. And yeah. then all of a sudden, oh, okay, time to go to school. And, uh, the, the public school system said, no, we, we want them to go to kindergarten. They already know all that stuff. Oh, no, no, they've got to go to kindergarten. And so I'm like, no, no, if that's the way you want to play, I'm not going to play that game. So I ended up uh, doing the homeschool route and we did the K-12 program. And I really liked that because I got to be one-on-one -on -one with them and and right. uh, actually able to see what the, it, it's all paid for. Uh, it's still public school but it's public school that I get to supervise. And so I get to actually teach them firsthand. And so if there's something, you know, if they're trying to teach that the earth is a globe, uh, you know, I can be, okay, well, this is what they say. And I can actually uh, kind of, you know, stick my, my, my foot in there and uh, yeah. kind of help them to see, be aware of the different teaching methods that they're, that they're using to persuade them. And, oh, wow, look at this. This is the way they're trying to, to, get you to see things. And so, yeah, uh, it's important for them to, to know, uh, kind of what the world wants them to know, but it's also important to have that outside experience. And so, uh, where they can, they can see things, uh, but from the outside, I, I don't know how else to, to put it. And so, right. We homeschooled all five of our kids all the way through. From that's amazing. You know, and but we f we finished um, a long time ago before we even knew about flat Earth, so we could not incorporate that at all in ours. I've got mad respect for that, especially doing that while being a lawyer. I I can only imagine. We actually started uh, my first year of law school. Our daughter was uh, four, and uh, son had just turned two, uh, no three, had just turned three, and uh, so we started when we were in Virginia Beach, Virginia, and then. We just continued from then on with, with everyone, and everyone did very well. You know, uh, three of them went on to college and got degrees. One is an attorney, uh, and then two decided not to go on to college. But, you know, everyone has done very well. Wow. Yeah, uh, the thing – so yeah, I'm, there's a lot about the public school system that I, I really want my kids to – go through and experience. And so I want them to learn skills. And so, you know, I, I'm all about like, you know, the technical side of things and learning how things work and, you know, learning things you can actually apply. But, and I think that's kind of the big difference between uh, astronomy and, and, you know, learning all of these, you know, crazy things that there's no skill involved in that, in the, except for maybe and making things up. True, right? either. <laughs> kind of maybe memorization. So there's there's uh, that difference, and versus you know becoming an auto mechanic or something like that, and that's an actual skill that you can actually use in life. And yeah. those are good trades now. I mean, people, you know, if time remains, get involved with you know construction, plumbing, electrical, heating and cooling. You know, those are all good uh, careers. Yeah. Yeah. So I, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So thank you so much for, for joining me. I've really enjoyed talking with you and uh, I thank look you, forward to getting better in the future. This has just been yeah. amazing. Yeah. yeah. I love the way, I love the things that I felt while talking to you. I, I yeah. could definitely feel, you know, God speaking through you and that right there, just huge. Yeah. Thank you, brother. Yeah. That it is so important, you know, discerning the Holy spirit and being able to know, you know, when someone is speaking truth, that's that's very critical for us, you know. So I appreciate the opportunity just to, 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 to meet you and talk to you and to your audience. So uh, praise the Lord, brother. I appreciate yeah. it. I'll, I'll definitely send people your way. And uh, I want to uh, yeah, amen. Uh, get that out. Great. Sounds wonderful. So God bless you. And, uh, you know. May the Lord be with you. Okay. Thank you. And you too. All right, bro. Okay. God bless. You too. Filling my eyes with wonder, watching every moment. Splendor 
Beholding everything made new Waiting for the world where peace and justice reign Looking for the truth I never find Hoping for a land without sin and pain The love inside my heart that's really mine Ooh.